There's a slogan from the fascist period in Italy. Um, Il duce ha sempre ragione. Mussolini is always right. <laughs> now, this was painted on walls everywhere in Italy, and there were big posters of it and pictures of Mussolini in a suitably heroic pose, that kind of thing. Our great leader. You know, that kind of leader worship stuff. The Italians seem to have actually created this idea of fascism, um, of uh, the glory of dynamism and things like that. Um, and to a people who are fundamentally anarchistic, if you ask me, which the Italians, in my opinion, are, um, to say something like that about their leaders is pretty far-fetched to get the Italians to believe this. And I think it's kind of... <clears throat> It's kind of saying, look, the way we Italians normally do things is completely chaotic and nothing ever gets done. So let's just assume that the leader is always right and watch what happens. I think that things will work better that way. Uh, that's kind of, if you ask me, the thinking behind that, be behind Mussolini is always right. Because we know that no human being is ever right. And we also know that, uh, again, Italians are the last people you can get to worship authority. <laughs> They just tend to think anybody who's in charge of anything is probably an idiot or a crook. <clears throat> but axiomatically, to make the fascist political, economic, social experiment work, we just say, the leader is right, we follow what he says. Just as an as a axiom of political policy. We know that he's going to make mistakes, but it's better to make a mistake, recover from the mistake, and keep going. Dynamism, that kind of thing. Axiomatically, it makes sense. <clears throat> In real life, we know that it leads to disaster. Um, look what happened to Italy during the Second World War. <laughs> uh, disaster. Um, now, when you go and define anything that way, in an absolute kind of sense, you get side effects, you get unintended consequences, you get the bad side of that kind of thinking. When you decide that the universe just is a physical thing and everybody in it is just a property of physicality and, you know, we all obey universal laws, etc., etc., that's useful if you want to build one of these things, a house, or if you want to build one of those things over there, a car, or if you want to launch a rocket to the moon or whatever. When you want absolute truths, the results of thinking that this is exactly what it appears to be can be disastrous because things aren't what they see, what they seem to be. I think that we, we even know this. We know that that sky up there doesn't end. We know that numbers just, will just keep going in our number system, which seems to be based on the idea that you can have a finite piece of infinity, are irrational fundamentally. And once our numerical system comes under question, everything comes under question. <clears throat> If we keep the context, i.e., if we remember that Mussolini is a flawed human being who will make mistakes, but he's simply better than raw chaos, near civil war, constant anarchy, which was Italy for a millennia, or at least a millennium, I guess, um, then what Mussolini was selling to the Italian people made sense. It's better to make a mistake make, uh, and, and learn from it and keep going than to just go, oh God, we can't do anything. That's Mussolini ha sempre ragione. That's what that means. It doesn't mean that Mussolini actually is phenomenally always right. Um, but some people, I presume, took it that way. Mussolini is a god. He cannot make a mistake. Therefore, if he says that it's right, it's right. Um, do we see science that way? I think we might. <laughs>